Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades. So it's uh, shortly after Christmas here and like a lot of people out there I got Amazon gift cards for some of my Christmas presents which is fine with me. Uh, that way I get what I want and the color and the type and the size and I don't ever have a problem with that but what I decided to do with my Amazon gift cards is I bought some new carbide wood turning tools. Now what I went with was I went with this kit and I'll put the uh, I'll put the link to the kit down below in the description I went with this kit it, uh, it comes with five heads and one handle and you can interchange the heads with this allen key to this one handle and you can basically have five tools well I don't like the concept of just one handle. I've got five tools. I would just as soon have them all outfitted with handles. And quite honestly, it's it's a bit of a pain in the butt to have to change them out every time you want to use a different head. But what I'm going to do is I went to, I have a local hardwood store here in uh, my town. And I went and picked up some wood turning blanks. And I'm going to make my own handles for the remaining four and I might even make a fifth one we'll we'll see what I feel like uh, there's no reason to not use this handle it's it's just fine in every respect and and I might as well use it but I'm gonna make some new handles for the other four at least tools so I picked up a piece of Brazilian cherry I've got some uh, purple heart I got a nice piece of straight grain walnut and then I've got two pieces of hickory at any rate, uh, we're gonna do we're gonna do some handles out of these out of these blocks of wood, and let's see how they turn out. All right, so the first thing we have to do before we even start turning wood is we have to come up with a, a ferrule. Uh, this is a cheap Harbor Freight parting tool, and it's got a ferrule on it. It looks like it's either copper or brass. I can't quite tell which. Uh, this ferrule has actually got a functional purpose to it, or it's supposed to. Uh, it's supposed to keep the wood from splitting on the end because when you get it turned down and you get a hole drilled in it and then you shove the tool in there, uh, you're taking away a lot of the structural integrity of the wood. So they put a ferrule on here to keep them from splitting. Now, like I said, this is a cheap Harbor Freight parting tool. And look at here, the ferrule is loose, actually. It's actually doing no good whatsoever. And I can prove that it's not doing any good because you can see right there, it's splitting the wood is and that's exactly what the ferrule is supposed to keep from happening is it's supposed to keep it from splitting so at this point on this tool that ferrule is actually just there for decorative purposes now here's a little more a little more quality tool this is a rockler it's a uh, it's a carbide tool and it's got a ferrule on it the ferrule is on there right nice and tight and you can see that the handle is not splitting anywhere on the on the wood so this ferrule is actually doing its job now you can buy ferrules on amazon uh, me being the kind of person that i am i am going to make my ferrule and what i use to make my ferrule is a piece of brass pipe fitting i buy this buy these at the local home center they're about 11 bucks now the package says this particular one is a half inch uh, I don't know why it's a half inch because the shaft on my tool, when I put a caliper on it, calipers out at half of an inch. Well, you can see that the inside of the pipe is obviously bigger than the shaft of the tool, which is good because you want it to be bigger. You don't want the shaft of your tool to go right out to the edge of the ferrule. You want some wood to be in there. Uh, you can see here on the rockler, there's actually quite a bit of wood there, and that's 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 probably one of the reasons it's lasted so long and it's been doing so well. The Harbor Freight one, there's very very little wood there, so I use this pipe so that it's it's really heavy walled. It's going to do its job, and I actually pound these things into place. Uh, I don't just slip them on and and stick some epoxy on them. Uh, I pound them into place. So. We're gonna go over the process here of first making a ferrule. So, like I said, I went and I, what you can do is you can actually bring your tool with you to the home center 
and a lot, they, a lot of times they have uh, a little display of these fittings. And you can actually shove it in there to make sure it's gonna make sure it's gonna give you some room and it's gonna give you some play in there. And this one's obviously gonna give me quite a bit of play in there, so that that's a good thing. So uh, let's let's cut this up and to make and make ferro material out of it. So all I do here is I and I'm gonna do this. I've got other ways to do this, but I'm gonna try and do this with using tools that most everybody should have probably in their shop. So I'm just gonna clamp this down in a vise and I'm gonna grab my tape measure, which is not right in front of me because I am horribly ill-prepared. And I'm gonna take a Sharpie marker. Now you can use this threaded part if you want. Uh, the neat thing about brass and copper too for that matter is you can actually use your tools to cut this and shape this. Uh, I would not recommend you using your carbide cutters. I would use your, your cheap Harbor Freight high-speed tool steel ones because you can resharpen those easily. But you can actually cut this on your lathe, and we'll show you that in a little bit. But I like to have three-quarters of an inch of a ferrule. So you can see here this threaded part is about a half of an inch. So I'm going to make a mark there. And then I'm going to just make a mark, and I'm just going to cut two ferrules right away. What I'm going to use to cut them is my battery operated Black & Decker reciprocating saw. Now that you have them cut, caution sharp edges, and they're probably going to be a little warm. Take an old file, the old nasty rusty file that you have in your box, and just knock that burr off. And I say use an old nasty gnarly file because brass will clog up your files. Same as aluminum. I don't know if any of you have ever filed aluminum before, but it will clog them up. Or you can take it over to your belt grinder and you can smooth it out with a belt grinder. But if you don't have a belt grinder, just a nasty file or even just some, uh, some sandpaper laid flat on the bench will certainly do the job just fine. Okay. So there we go. We got them kind of cleaned up. Now we can set those aside and we can go to wood turning. So I'm just going to use my, I'm just going to use my spindle gouge or my roughing gouge, excuse me, and I'm just gonna turn this thing to round. So now I've got it turned mostly round. Uh, there's a little flat spot here and there, but it's it's round enough. Now the next step we have to do is we have to turn turn this the section for the ferrule. So before I do that, though, I'm actually going to drill my hole. Uh, now I don't have enough lathe length to drill my hole with the lathe. As much as I would like to drill my hole with the lathe, I can't. I, I just simply don't have enough bed length to get it done. All right, I'm just going to use a, a regular hand drill and drill as straight a hole as I possibly can because I'm trying to do this in such a way that anybody can do it who's got, who's got basic hand tools in their, at their disposal. All right, so one of the things you need to understand is you don't want this loose in your handle. You, want, you don't want to have to beat it into place but you want a snug fit. So like I said, this might, this measured out at a half an inch, which is fine. So, but what the problem is, is if I was to drill a half inch hole, anybody who's worked wood enough knows that when you drill a half inch hole, it's a little bigger than a half of an inch. 
So what I like to do is you can see here's my drill index and this is the hole for the half inch. You can see it fits in there and there's there's some room to play. It's it's bigger than a half of an inch. So what I do is I go, I just like every tool, and I do this with every one because they aren't all going to be exactly the same. I go down the drill index and I put this in every hole of the drill index. Oh, I'm getting closer. Okay, it doesn't fit in this one. So this is the bit that I'm going to use because it doesn't quite fit in there. And I'm expecting that when I drill the hole, it's going to drill just a little bit bigger. So that's the bit that I'm going to use to finish the hole out. And I'm also going to use a smaller bit just to get a pilot hole going. All right, so I've got my handle chucked up or clamped up in my vise here. And I'm not worried about marring the surface or anything because that's all going to get turned away later. So it, it doesn't matter. I just chuck, put it in the vise. And here's the hole from my live center. So I'm just going to use that as a guide. And I'm going to try and get that drill as level and as straight as I possibly can just by hand. Okay, so I've got a pilot hole started. Now the other thing we need to know is how deep is this shaft? So we want to drill as deep as the shaft is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of masking tape and I'm just going to lay it up against the shaft here and I'm going to say that's how deep I want my hole. This doesn't have to be, we're, we're not building the space shuttle here. We're, we're building tools and they're going to get used and they're going to get used hard so we don't have to be terribly precise and I'm going to finish drilling out the hole. And I drill down to the tape and that's the end of it. So now I'm going up to the bit that I wanted to use to finish off the hole. And this is hickory. It's drilling really, really hard. And I'm going to finish off the hole. Now you'll notice I didn't put tape on that one. Why is that? Because I could feel when I hit the bottom of that hole. I'm at the bottom. Now I'm going to do a little test fit. That's actually a little tighter than I'd like it to be. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna step up to the next size drill bit. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Ed, why didn't you just go to the bigger one right off the bat? There, that's a much better fit. And when I epoxy this into place, it'll fit really good. Because I, once you drill away wood or once you take wood away, you can't put any back. This isn't like working with metal where if you cut it a little too short, if you drill the hole a little big, you can just weld the hole shut and try it again. Uh, you got a one shot at this thing. So now I've got the hole drilled. Now I'm gonna go put this back in the lathe and we're gonna finish turning that handle. Okay, now you can actually see I've switched live centers here. And I did that because when I put this handle into the live center, it'll do a little better job of centering it up. So let's push this a bit out of the way. The other thing I did was I marked my my handle and I marked it to correspond with the numbers on my on my chuck so when I put this in that X is going to go on the number one jaw that way everything stays true and lined up and correct This handle is going to be ending up being 14 inches long. So I cut the blank 15 inches long to give me a little bit of room to play. And now we're going to go ahead and now we'll start actually turning the handle itself. So the first step we have to do is we have to turn this, this end down here so that it matches the ferrule. So I'm actually going to use the threaded ferrule just to show you guys that you don't have to waste any of this stuff. And so I'm going to take and I'm going to mark right here. That's, that's the length of my ferrule. So let's just make a pencil line. Of course, I broke the lead, which is always going to be the case. Now I have a line 
to go by. Just using a square carbide cutter. Now you'll notice I'm not going right to the pencil line right away. Why is that? Because if I jack it up, I still have the opportunity to fix it before, before we cut too much off. That's why I cut this thing an inch longer than I needed it to be. Okay, I'm not quite there yet, so I'm just going to be real careful and take off just shavings worth. Okay, I'm to the point now where I'm gonna stop using a cutter to finish it off. And I, after I get this last one to match it, I'm gonna to revert to sandpaper. Now there is nothing wrong with finishing these off at sandpaper. Oh yeah, there's gonna be guys out there that tell you, well, if you're good with your tools, you shouldn't need to. Well, okay, so be it. But if you screw it up, there's no fixing it. Okay, I am just barely under five eighths of an inch, which is great because, because now I can actually press this into place. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to check this. Once more time against my ferrule, my depth is good. In fact, my wood's poking out just a little bit, and that's fine. We can take care of that later. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my diamond tool, and I'm just going to make a little nick on the inside there, because when I push this down, when I push the ferrule down, it's going to create some shavings if we did our job right, and I want those shavings to cut off. when they hit to the bottom. So now what we do is we're gonna take this thing out of there and I'm actually gonna pound the ferrule into place. All right, so I've got my handle here. My ferrule neck has been turned down. Here's my ferrule material and it just barely fits over the edge. Now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna pound this into place. Now you wanna try and make sure you pound it straight down because you, I mean, you feasibly could snap off that ferrule neck so you want to be as careful as you possibly can. And it does fit on there just on the very tip. And then I've actually got it ever so slightly tapered. So it's going to get tighter as it goes down. And I want it to do that because I want it to shave wood as I'm putting it down on the handle. And there it is. Now my ferrule is put in place. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna put this back into the chuck as where I indexed it for jaw number one. I'm gonna bring up my center, just so everything's nice and in place. I'm gonna snug it up just a little bit, not too tight. And then I'm gonna tighten up my chuck. Now we have to decide on a handle shape. I like the shape of these Harbor Freight tools, so I'm just gonna have to scale it up a little bit. I kinda like the shape of it. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make the fat part of the palm swell right here. 
We're going to make that an inch and a half. We're going to bring it down to right around an inch-ish here. And then we're going to finish it off at 14 inches. I'm going to measure out 14 inches from the end of my ferrule. That's where the handle is going to end. All right, so now I've got my handle mostly turned. Now we have to deal with this ferrule up here. Now, I was telling you earlier that you can cut this with your tools, and you certainly can. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna do it right now, but I would not use your carbides. Uh, I would use your cheap Harbor Freight tools. Preferably the ones that you can resharpen. Because here's what I'm going to tell you is even though you can cut this with your regular lathe tools, it is going to require a lot of sharpening. Uh, you're going to dull them fast and you're going to have to touch them up. So very, very light cuts. I just use basically scrapers. Uh, since all we're doing is taking threads off here, it should cut fairly easy until we get down to solid metal and then we just sand it out with sandpaper. All right, so I've got it sanded down to the grit that I like and uh, feels nice and smooth. I'm still gonna put a finish on here and do a little more polishing on that ferrule, but not too much. Okay, so let's just throw a little finish on it. I'm not gonna get too, uh, I'm not gonna get too fancy with a finish. I'm just gonna put a, put a few coats of tongue oil on it. It doesn't need to be anything more than that. I'm not going for a high polish or anything like that. I just want, I just want to nourish the wood a little bit. Put a good coat of tongue oil on there. Let that soak that up. We'll come back, we'll part it off, and then we'll, uh, we'll seat the handle. All right, so the handle's all ready to go. 
and this is just a rectangular file is all it is. I'm just going to make a whole bunch of cuts into this shank so the epoxy has got something to grab onto. Okay, so now my, my shank is prepared. Uh, I'm going to take a little isopropyl alcohol. And I'm going to clean the shank off really good, make sure there's no oil, nothing like that. Make sure this thing is ready to accept the epoxy, okay? Okay, now we're going to set that aside with. So you just take, with this product, you just take and you put a, you put a given amount on there. It doesn't really matter how much, however much you think you're going to need. Uh, here's the key to it. Make sure you wipe off your spatula or your popsicle stick or whatever it is you're going to use to mix this up with before you go dipping it into the hardener. Then you take an approximate same amount of hardener. That's a little light. I'm going to grab just a little more. And it's approximately a 50-50 ratio, 50-50 mix ratio. It's, it's not, you don't have to weigh it, you don't have to measure it with, with teaspoons, none of that kind of stuff, you just guess. And then you just mix it up thoroughly. And the nice thing about this stuff is it doesn't set up really fast. It's got a, it's got a pretty liberal working time on it, so once you've got it mixed up, you've got some time to play around with it. And then you just have to walk away from it when it's all said and done and let it do its thing. Okay, that's, that should be sufficiently mixed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little spatula and I'm going to put epoxy right in the hole. Kind of slosh it around in there, get it all throughout the walls, get it all the way down to the bottom. Get it all the way across the top. And then I'm going to put just a little more down in there in the bottom. just to make sure that there's plenty of it in there, okay? Then I'm gonna take the tool shank and I'm, I'm literally just gonna roll it in the epoxy and get some more epoxy on the tool shank. Okay, and then it's just a matter of simply inserting the tool shank into the handle as you push it down in there and hold it over your cardboard or whatever you use to mix it because it's going to squeeze some out and that's fine you want it to squeeze some out it's going to squeeze out some air and just as you push it in there just twist it and push it down in there and it's going to get hard hard to push and then you just want to force that epoxy out that way you know the hole is full you know there's plenty of epoxy in there then I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm just going to clean off the excess. And there it is. Now once you've got it seated in there, try not to turn it too much. Try to just let it sit there and let the epoxy harden up and do its thing and then just set it aside and walk away from it. And then you can come back the next day and the tool will be ready to use. Now that that's done, let's go turn some more handles.
there you got it. Uh, it's as easy as that. Pick up some turning stock, uh, any kind of wood that you can possibly use for turning handles. Order this, this kit, which I'll post in the description down in the down below. And you can take, you can use the aluminum handle they give you, and then you can go ahead and turn four more handles and get yourself a nice set of carbide turning tools. It's, it's really that easy. Please hit the like and subscribe button on the below the below the description and hit that notification bell. Uh, that way every time I upload a new video, you'll get notified of it and you'll be sure not to miss a video. So I appreciate it. I'm steadily creeping up on my first thousand. So I'm trying to get at least a thousand viewers to start off with and then we'll go from there. And maybe when I hit a thousand, I'll do a little giveaway or something like that. But uh, I need the subscribers to get there. So I appreciate all the subscribers I have. I haven't quite hit a thousand yet. And that's, that's the goal in the next few months is to try and get to a thousand subscribers. So please do me the favor, hit the subscribe button and uh, keep following my videos. Have a great day. Have a great rest of your year. And we'll see you guys in 2021.